In many countries, crop production is limited to a three to six month rainy season. While access to water has allowed some farmers to grow high value vegetable crops in the dry season, the increased demand for water, land and labor is putting these activities at stake. Fortunately, more efficient technologies have emerged, both for soil fertility and water management. When you sell tomatoes grown with drip irrigation, with the money you buy cereals and store them. After, you resell to buy food for your family and to pay for expenses such as school fees. In this video, we will learn how low-cost drip irrigation, combined with urea supergranules, can increase your tomato production and double your profit. With drip irrigation, water is applied to the crop in a continuous way, drop by drop. Another income-boosting technology that is easily combined with drip irrigation is urea supergranules. Supergranules are made by pressing the powdered dry urea using a briquetting machine. Before we take a closer look at how it works, let's listen to some farmers from northern Burkina Faso about its benefits. Drip irrigation makes our lives a lot easier. With manual irrigation, we have to take medicines, but with drip irrigation, filling the reservoir does not tire us. After preparing the planting bed and transplanting, you fill the reservoir for the day and you can go and do something else. Labor is also reduced in other ways, as hand watering often compacts the soil surface and requires daily hoeing. With drip irrigation, the soil surface doesn't seal quickly. But with hand watering, even if you loosen up the soil and you water, the next day you see that the water has compacted the soil. At the next watering, the soil surface is sealed and the water does not infiltrate. But with drip irrigation, the soil stays loose and the water goes down. When the soil surface is sealed, even air cannot penetrate, yet the roots need air. But with drip irrigation, along with the water, the air penetrates. Hand watering causes large fluctuations in water availability and puts the crop under great stress. Drip irrigation, on the other hand, distributes water slowly and avoids periods during which the crop gets either too much or not enough water. If you want to know how far the water has infiltrated, I press down a stick. With drip irrigation, the soil easily gets humid up to 30 to 35 centimeters in depth. But with hand watering, the maximum depth you'll get is 15 centimeters, as the water runs off and doesn't go down. That's why. The roots of the crop develop as deep as the soil gets humid. The way the roots develop, the fruits also develop. So drip irrigation is more beneficial. Let's see how this affects plant growth. The two planting beds on the right show tomato plants that are hand watered. The planting beds on the left were transplanted on the same day, but watered with drip irrigation. With drip irrigation, the plants grow well and produce a lot. If you water by hand, it can damage the plants. But with drip irrigation, the water does not touch the plants and doesn't make the flowers drop. Trip irrigation makes better use of water. Water is stored, goes down and moistens the soil slowly. As the water wets the soil, the plants grow well and produce much more fruit than with hand watering.
Drip irrigation saves a lot of water and can increase yields by 50% or more. Farmers who combine drip irrigation with use of urea supergranules can even double their yields. Apart from boosting yields, drip irrigation also limits the spread of diseases and reduces the need to frequently use insecticides against worms. With drip irrigation, if you treat twice, it is enough. But with hand watering, you need to spray three, four, five or even six times, as each time the water washes off the product. But with drip irrigation, if you spray your crop, the product is not washed off, so it is beneficial. Women and men in Ranawa village show us how they joined forces to set up a drip irrigation system. Using readily available plastic buckets, a small hole is made in the bottom. A piece of screen is used to filter the water that goes from the reservoir into the pipe. At the site, ensure the support is properly leveled and that it is strong enough to hold the bucket, even with strong winds. The higher you place the reservoir, the higher the pressure on the water and the faster it will drip. The drip irrigation kit shown here has a bucket of 200 litres that is placed at 90 centimetres high. Ideal to water 200 tomato plants. By establishing your own nursery, you can obtain strong and healthy tomato seedlings. Once the seedlings are two to three weeks old, they are ready for transplanting. Establish your planting bed by measuring 15 meters by 1.6 meters. Loosen up the soil. Add well decomposed organic matter and level the plot. The benefit organic material brings to our production is that it enriches and keeps the soil soft to allow the plant to live better. Where organic matter is applied, the water conserves better and the plants do not dry out. The way we go about to obtain organic matter is that the men who raise animals bring a full wheelbarrow and the women a full bowl because they do not have animals. Then we put everything together to do the job. Once leveled, position on the planting bed two drip irrigation pipes of 15 meters each. 60 centimeters apart. Small holes have been made in the pipes at 30 centimeter intervals to coincide with the planting distance of tomato plants. By having the holes face up, you avoid soil clogging the holes. The morning after installing and filling the reservoir, the soil is sufficiently moistened to transplant. Transplant the tomato seedlings at both sides of the pipe at each hole, leaving 30 centimeters between the seedlings. Mulching protects the newly transplanted seedlings by reducing heat stress and conserving soil humidity. After transplanting, refill the buckets once every other day either in the morning or in the evening. Mechanical or manual pumps greatly reduce labor to fill up the buckets. Apart from using less water, also fertilizer can be used more efficiently with drip irrigation. Two experienced growers explain how. Well, let's say, well, for some cotton fire, 
If you apply fertilizer on the surface, say a kilo, the wind will take part of it, the sun will also take some. But if you bury it under the dripper, the tomato plant will take it up correctly. Each root takes what it must take. When you bury a urea supergranule, it will remain in place and be available to the plant at any time. Two weeks after transplanting, place one urea supergranule and a pinch of NPK at about seven centimeters or one finger depth under each drip and close the hole. This will optimize nutrient uptake. Once the plants start flowering, they need more water. Refill the buckets daily. Reduce the watering again once the fruits are fully grown to speed up ripening. To keep your irrigation system working properly, there's necessary maintenance required. Clean the buckets every week or whenever needed as dirt in the water may accumulate at the bottom and block the pipes. To clean the drip irrigation pipes, suck the dirt out of them and wait until clear water appears. Open the end of the pipes to flush the system. Slightly tapping a blocked hole can help to unblock it. So, as this video has shown, Setting up and maintaining a drip irrigation system is easy and highly beneficial. Let's summarize what we've learned. Drip irrigation is a way of producing more with less water. Especially when a pump is used to fill up the reservoir, the time to water a crop is drastically reduced. As opposed to manual irrigation, the steady release of water drops does not compact the soil and reduces stress in the crop. Combined with urea supergranules, drip irrigation can double your tomato yield. If I had a brother in Ghana, Togo or Europe, I would tell him straight away that drip irrigation, in any case, is great.